Hello and welcome. I'm here with Victor and Alex, who are about to play Las Presencias No. 7, a piece by Guastavino serving as a preview for the Spring Festival of Music from Latin and South America. I was wondering if you could tell us what makes the music of this composer unique. There are a number of Argentinian composers featured on the program, uh, particularly Ginastera and Piazzolla. What makes Guastavino's music special? Well, um, Guastavino, you know, is not a composer that I've spent a whole lot of time playing, but exploring his music the last few days has been really fun. And one thing that Alex and I have discovered is that actually he was really influenced by the Russian and French composers, you know, about a hundred years ago, a little bit before he started composing. And, you know, his main influences would have been Rachmaninoff and Ravel. And it's fun to play his music because we're discovering those influences all over the place, you know, like Alex was saying, it was the left hand. Yeah, it was you know, very interesting. I was learning the piece, and I mean, obviously, it sounds in Argentinian, uh, but parts of it uh, almost you know, felt like Rachmaninoff or, you know, Ravel piano piece. And, you know, at that time, you know, I didn't know any backstory about it, it's just something I noticed. And you know, I was very interested to um, later on to learn that he was actually inspired by these composers and, you know, this was a conscious effort, you know, on his part uh, to, you know, write a little bit in this style. And do you find that that's different than what most Argentinian composers were doing at the time? This piece, of course, was written in the mid-60s. Yeah, well, you know, I think, like Alex said, this style is still very much, you know, South American. You can hear a lot of the influences, but it's the way it's textured in the piano part, the way the violin lines are extremely long, it really does remind you of some of that more romantic European classical music versus, you know, more of a dance feeling with, you know, more upbeat rhythms and, and things we're more used to hearing from Ginastera or, or maybe even Pizzolo. You know, even though Pizzolo actually also studied in Europe, he really didn't bring a lot of that influence back with him. He actually did the opposite and really based his whole music on sounding, you know, Argentinian, his own thing off the tango music that was happening there. And, and Guasavino didn't do that. And that's kind of cool. It's interesting and it's a lot of contrast. You mentioned long lines and something that that brings to my mind with European classical music, of course, is opera and right. vocal writing. And Guastavino actually has a large opus of vocal works. And is there any way that that might have influenced his writing for the violin? I'm, you know, I'm sure it did. It's, it's hard to exactly explain how, but the fact that, you know, the phrases are very clear and you have, you know, always a second to breathe at the end of the phrase, that really is reminiscent of the vocal style. And you'll notice in this piece that every phrase always kind of ends with that, um, that release, which then allows you to, to take a breath and start something new, which is not something you hear all the time in instrumental music. Sometimes it can be more fragmented or without a place to breathe. And, and that, so that, that is a big vocal aspect of it, I think. You and know? do you find approaching that style of music different from what you normally do as a violinist? I know you're well acquainted with accompanying for both violin and singers. And, you know, I, I can say I, I see definitely, you know, a lot of resemblance to you know, the vocal music, you know, even just in the way it's phrased and structured. You know, the, the vocal music is usually based on, you know, the breathing ability of the human voice, which kind of dictates, you know, the phrasing and the, the shape of the phrases, the length. And, you know, I definitely see a lot of it, you know, in, in this piece, you know, as Victor mentioned. Yeah. It's, very, it's very obvious. Uh, was there, is there anything that you do differently when you approach music written in this type of vocal style on the violin? You know, not me personally so much because I feel like when I play the violin, no matter what it is, I tend to try to be very vocal with my approach. Uh, sometimes that's not, you know, what you always want, but I find that that's usually how I find the most beautiful violin playing is if I always try to imitate what the voice would do is the most natural way of approaching instrumental playing. So to me, it's similar to how I usually approach music. It's just, you know, the way he's done it is very obvious for, for us and for the audience, I think, that it is influenced by vocal music. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Alex. We hope that you'll join us either live on March 20th or on YouTube later through a video link. 
to enjoy not only some other vocal music from Latin and South America, but also some of those dancier tunes that Victor mentioned.